right, and welcome back. The hashtag is why the morning. That's where you can find us on socials, Facebook, Instagram, and the rest as well, at Y244 channel underscore on the ground. Personally, it's a brand so corner one. This is the last conversation of the day. We are just picking up where Stephanie has left off, and uh, we are actually having a good question that we've loaded up on our social media, and let me get to it first before I actually ask, before I actually sample of your feedback as we continue, and also before I introduce my guest, uh, we are talking about ethical leadership, and the question is, Je, what changes should we expect to economy after our coup opposition? This is after the opposition brigade, like part of it, not all of it. Of course, there's been like a push and pull. We saw what Kalonzo Musioka said. We saw what Mata Karua tweeted. We saw what Eugenio Malo tweeted. And so much furore building up around that part. And then, you know, on the other side, Gen Z's felt like they were betrayed. You remember when the uh, Mandamanos began, the first protest, the, the first, first Gen Z lady who did the video, Lesema, Baba, don't join us. This time round, we are doing it on our own. And then eventually, so all that energy and whatnot. But today we are focusing on the opportunities that are there. Is it possible even to have a dialogue that will lead to the unity of the Gen Zs? And on that note, I'm being joined live in studio by Kiprono Arab Kiro. He's a political strategist and he's a Gen Z to top that up. Karibu sana, Mr. You. Kiprono yeah. Arab Kiro. <laughs> Imekosea to Arab Ruh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost said Arab Pruto. But anyways, yeah. Uh, so le let's get into it. Um, a lot has transpired since uh, last week. Yes. Uh, of course, yeah, what was remaining was the 10 uh, cabinet uh, secretaries to be nominated. Uh, a lot of feedback that I've seen even in the X spaces, uh, the question is, why couldn't, could, could it, couldn't it not have been possible to just select, you know, a young person like you? There's even somebody who proposed, uh, let's have Okia Tata. somebody said, uh, let's have Hanifa, let's have uh, Kasmuel Makori, let's have the, uh, Wanjiru or Masitarus. Why is it not possible to have young people join in and also be part of this leadership? On the issue of young people uh, and the selection of the 10 cabinet sectors last week, I tend to believe, as a believer in the rule of law and democracy, the president is at liberty to choose whoever he feels he wants to work with. And these are people, uh, you, you've mentioned several names that you have proposed that they be in cabinet. These are the same people who have rejected dialogue, right? And because they have rejected dialogue, are you going to have a conversation with somebody who tells you, no, I'm not ready to come and sit in a table with you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to engage them? Are you going to give them ideas? Which ideas are they going to bring so that you are able to run government with them? First, mm -hmm. running government is not an event. It's a process. Okay. And running government requires expertise and experience. The people you're saying, the, you, you do propose to be in government as cabinet secretaries, can be experts, right? Mm -hmm. But do not have the requisite experience mm -hmm. to run the affairs of the ministry. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the conversation is, let's have a young representative. We have a young speaks, representative speaks, in the Ministry of Water. Who speaks, but it, it seems like in the Gen Z's don't even know him. Yeah, that's, that's, so that's is it a must? You, you see, we one also, of the problems that I have po politics about popularism as well. At least no, one of the problems that I have, one of the problems that I have with, ground, with the current you know? activists uh -huh. is that. So you're saying you need somebody you know mm -hmm. to be in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Does Post it mean picks, the person does to it, your voice as a young it, person, not just being? Gen Z was a movement of all Gen Zs in the country. Yeah. And if and even one was picked, yes, and even millennials, and if one was picked, mm -hmm. the one who is not known was picked to lead the Ministry of Water and Sanitation, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, what, what problem do you have with him? He speaks for Gen Z's because he's among them. He understands the challenges we face as the Gen Z's. Yeah. He can't be able to speak for us. You cannot be able to, to, to blackmail the president and tell the president, okay, this is the list of the people we are giving you. Dominate one of them because we know. Because we know. Some mm -hmm. of these people were paid to run the, the, the protest, the anti government protest. Who are those that were paid? 
No, I, I really don't want to, 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 to even speak about their names. But then I that's I a know. blanket statement that you no, should no, no. withdraw. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to withdraw. This yeah. is an issue that is in the public domain. Uh, can you tell, prove it? If, listen, if, listen. If, if, if we if took, saw, if we took a the letter. Sorry, listen, because I'm the one hosting yes. you. So I'm, I'm controlling you yes. and what you're telling me. Yes. So if we were to take a commercial break right now and we were to take you to court, would you say these faces that have been activizing for the, city, for the Gen Zs who are paid? On basis of the letter that was written by the Foreign Affairs Principal Secretary, uh -huh. Dr. Cory Singoe, okay. to the Ford Foundation, he, the letter implicates several organizations, right? Mm -hmm. that received m funding from the Ford Foundation. Mm -hmm. and the Organizations? Same, yes. Not activists? Organizations are led by activists. So, so if, you, if by the time you are able my to... My problem school, with that statement, because it can destroy the, the, the movement of this conversation, is don't make blanket statements. Of I'm not making a blanket sta yeah. statement. Yeah. The government has even admitted in a letter you said specific to activists that were paid. That's why I didn't mention the name of anyone. But you can prove that. You can prove I that if you're taking to I can't be able to prove on basis of the letter that government wrote. All right, I, yes. I'll, I'll pass on that one, but Mr. Udiya's statement, I'll continue with what you were saying. So I was saying, we cannot be able to blackmail the president and tell the president, okay, pick so and so because we know he or she led this movement that, yeah. that was anti-government protest. Mm -hmm. We cannot be able to blackmail. If you are picked today and you are not known uh -huh. and you become a cabinet secretary, are you not a Gen Z? Okay. Don't mm -hmm. you deserve to be in that? Kenya belongs to all of us. Uh -huh. Yes. So your point, wh what's your point? My point is the president has given the Gen Z the Ministry of Water and Sanitation. Mm -hmm. Because the person who is nominated to that position is a young person. So mm -hmm. let's give the president time, because if we give the president time, next year at the same time, we will be able to see that if there were changes in the government, right? Mm -hmm. Because you cannot be able to say, okay, I reject the dialogue, Ruto must go. Mm -hmm. Okay, if Ruto goes, what then is the solution? If Ruto goes, it means the deputy president yeah. is the one going to take over as the president of the country, right? Mm -hmm. And if the deputy president is the one going to take over, and the kind of the deputy president we have in the country, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I think more chaos will be, we will be witnessing more chaos. So another option, then we the have a dysfunctional that's a good IBC. Point. That's a good we have point. A dis that we will be experiencing more chaos because the yes. people that were supposed to be represented there were not represented. And so the reason why even the protests are building up is because there's people who feel like Akuna mtu mwenye naongelea mambo yangu, akuna mtu ana to compensate for the debts that have been incurred. There's nobody who is speaking in the same voice as to what the Gen Zs are saying. That is why president call for dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. President call for dialogue. Mm -hmm. I think it was supposed to start on Monday last week. But yeah. don't know what happened along the process. So this dialogue, Gen Zs are, are invited to the table to yeah. come and speak and say, President, look, these are people who were injured or died during the protest. What then is the government planning to compensate maybe these families mm -hmm. and for them to get justice? Okay. Yes. So it's, this is something that it's not a monopoly of idea. You, the president invites you to the table for dialogue. The president invites Honorable Raila Molo Odinga for dialogue. The mm -hmm. president invites public and private sector for dialogue. Because yeah. moving a country forward mm -hmm. is not something one person can do. But let me ask you, yes. the Gen Zs really need dialogue so that some of these issues are addressed. I mean, it's automatic. Uh, he knows people died. People are still being abducted. In fact, uh, I've just seen the number is hiking up, over 66 people are still missing and over a hundred and something injured and uncompensated and the abductions zinandela day by day. So we need maybe to have us a, a round table and say, you know, President, now this is the meetup that we want you to address these issues. This, the President, we donated the power, sovereign power. Remember Article 1, Clause 1 say the people of Kenya are sovereign, right? Yes. We donated sovereign power on the 8th of August in 2022 mm -hmm. To President William Ruto through 14. So he is there by virtue of our thoughts. 
So we are his boss, right? Mm -hmm. And as his boss, when, 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 by the time we feel like we want to have a conversation with him, mm -hmm. I think he has no choice but to come. We have the conversation. But now on the issue of abductions, arrests, and everything, uh, maybe I may not be in a position to know the reason for arrests, so mm -hmm. I might not be able to touch on that. But I think it's very wrong. This is a country governed by the rule of law. Ah. This is a country that is a democracy. And as a country, we must not entertain the 1990 kind of politics and blackmail yeah. on young people. Because young people are the people who are visionary. That the people who are going to see, look at, if the systems are not working for us right now, mm -hmm. what about in the next 30 years? Will it be working for my children? Mm -hmm. So they are concerned about the future. They are mm -hmm. not concerned about whoever is in power anyway. Mm -hmm. They are concerned about what kind of future I'm going to live in. I'm graduating from the university. I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. Unemployment rates are rising. The, the state of the economy is not performing very well. Mm -hmm. And so it's time we have an honest conversation with the people. And I've always posed this question. Oh, so the conversation is necessary? The conversation is very necessary. I've always posed this question. Mm -hmm. When did the rain started pitting us? As Gen Z's, we must be able to, be ask, to ask ourselves, when did the rain started pitting Kenya? By the time we come to know when did the rain started pitting us, we don't have to dig and ho the hole deeper. Because I believe genesis of Kenya's problems mm -hmm. is the foreign debt that we have. Is it really the foreign debt? Yes, or just because look or at... Or even our own domestic issues right look, here. Look at, leave alone domestic or, issues. Or, every is, state, is, or is it because of every that, state, that taxation? Every state... Because it started with the finance Every bill, state... And then uh, the, there was a lot of... Every state... Towards it, and, every state has its domestic... Said, you know what, you can't tax us. Uh, there was even a clause in the, in the finance bill that's, that was stuck, we were talking about taxing content creators, which is, you know, a job that Gen Z's created for themselves in, in their own online okay. sphere. Uh, you're, you're talking about opportunities. Uh, the president yesterday spoke in the town hall in Mombasa. Kasema, what? You know what? I'll pay for you your air tickets to go to outside countries. But you realize most people go in those outside countries. The only thing they go there is to work and start sending money here. Instead of, you know, from the, even the expresses that I was on yesterday, people are saying, let's have opportunities here. Let's not export labor. Because that's also another version of something called brain drain. So would you prefer to make home safer first before you travel outside or you rather travel outside and then come back to create home? I told you the genesis of the problems that we have as a country is the foreign debts that we have. For your information, if there's a loan that you, 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 you took in 2001 when a dollar was at maybe 60 shillings and it's maturing, you're supposed to pay in maybe 2024. Mm -hmm. And if, for example, you take 100 million US dollars for mm -hmm. the loan and you're supposed to pay in 2020 the same amount, mm -hmm. remember a dollar was 50 shillings at that time. Mm -hmm. By the time you pay, a dollar is 100 and that. Mm -hmm. To mean in every single dollar that you have, you have to pay, every single dollar you have to pay, you have to pay extra 80 shillings. Mm -hmm. What is the effect of that extra 80 shillings in the pockets of the people? The government ne looks for extra ways to raise revenue okay. to service this debt. So it exports labor to outside countries to pay If there are opportunities, up, no, no, it's not about to pay debts. If, the, if we, the government of Kenya cannot be able to employ everyone at a go, right? And if there are opportunities abroad, the president went to Germany, negotiated for opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And signed a deal with Germany. He went to Korea, signed a deal with Korea. You, there was co there were conversation with the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So mm -hmm. if we have opportunities abroad, and the president has shown goodwill that okay, I am going to pay air tickets for those who want to go abroad. Is if you true? want to go abroad, is it true he will pay air tickets, like he promised. He's the head of state. To me, okay. he is even able to pay. But if you want to go he's abroad, he says to pay, in town hall meeting. He's not going to pay. He will if he has promised. They will. So. Okay. He said in town hall meeting that if you want to go abroad for a job, if you secure an opportunity abroad. In fact, he said over 400,000 jobs. 
Yeah, if you secured an opportunity abroad, in yeah. one week time, you are able to secure your passport, right? That is what uh -huh. he said in Mombasa, and that is the yes. position of the head of state. And I suspect there's people who have not received their passport since two years ago. Since two years ago? Yes. So, we expect changes. Looking from, from what he spoke yesterday as the head of state and government, because the State Department of Immigration is a government entity, and okay. he is the boss, Looking from that conversation, we expect changes. So we have to see and wait. Okay, we will have a feedback in the next two weeks to one month. That two weeks did to I, one month. Did <laughs> I apply for, yes, because did I apply for passport on Monday and received it by the next Monday? Yeah, so it's, it's a matter of wait and see. It's a matter of the same day. Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said, he said, the there's a backlog of uh, printing and we have problems in printing. He said one week. Okay. So let's stick by that one week. We get a feedback from those who are applying the process yeah. so that we know what are the challenges. Yeah. Do, these people, do these people follow the directives? Because any conversation or any word of the president represents a policy directive of the government. Okay, let me ask you. Yes. Would you prefer to go to work in those countries you mentioned or start working here and establish yourself ground here first before... For you individually, I'm not asking for, for me that. individually. Uh -huh. I do prefer I start working here, and uh -huh. then maybe if I get opportunity, I go abroad. But uh, and that is why the government of Kenya every year is taking in thousands of interns, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as you graduate from the university, the government absorbs you for one year as an intern. You gain relevant knowledge and experience in the field of work, so yeah. that if you are able to secure a job abroad, you already have experience. Mm -hmm. So. The government has a good strategy of absorbing interns. Mm -hmm. But what needs to be done is investment on our economy, investment mm -hmm. on the industrialization sector. And the government had a good idea when we had aggregated industrial parks in counties that were supposed to, to create jo thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. We have a clean car factory in West Pokot. Mm -hmm whereby it has employed thousands of Kenyan youths. So okay. the solution to the challenges that we have, even as we look at, uh, even as we look at the challenges of our economy, is mm -hmm. that if we are able to tap into the industrialization sector and utilize the resources that we have as a country, mm -hmm. we are able to, we are able to, to employ thousands of youths. But do, those, do these youths willing to work in industries? Because not everyone, not everyone has a specialized in the industrial sector, right? Mm -hmm. The system of education that we have mm -hmm. has trained us for white collar jobs, mm -hmm. which in the current world and the modern world is, is a challenge to maneuver. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we also need to ask ourselves is, are we going to achieve, okay, by doing this industrialization, are we going to take care of the interest of those people who have done, who have trained for white collar jobs? Yeah, industrialization, absolutely. You can be hired as a HR. That's a white collar job. So if you, if you Even do, a blue collar yes, job as I, well in I, that I, industry. I, I understand. Let's say an EPZ. I, I understand. So, yeah. mm. one of the things the government needs, by the time we invest in the industrial sector, mm -hmm. industrial sector, we are going to gain profits and a lot of... Uh, production will so go So what's on. preventing us from investing in that uh, sector anyways? The government of President William Ruda had, a, had a, an idea of that. That is why if you go to my county, let me speak about my county, where I come from, Bomet County. If you go to Bomet County, we have an aggregated industrial park in Sotik that is supposed to be constructed. Mm -hmm. But with the current so it challenges, has stalled. it has stalled because mm -hmm. of the current challenges that we are facing in the country, that mm -hmm. uh, withdrawal of the finance bill, right? We have to reorganize the budgets of the state. Mm -hmm. The state has to reorganize its budget. But there were a lot of progress in industrial park. And remember, Sotik, Sotik alone can be able to employ maybe 5,000 youths. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because that's the area, that's mm -hmm. the area whereby a lot of farming is going on. We have dairy farming, we have yeah. tea farming. And mm -hmm. if we are able to do this industrial park, a lot of youths are going to, to get opportunities in this those who are going to work as farmers, and those mm. who are going to work in the processing, and those who are going to work in the marketing. Okay. Yes. So maybe we can still come back to the Gen Zs because uh, the narrative has been consistent. Yes. Leaderless, 
faceless, trapless, partyless. When you look at some of the defenses, even from uh, the guys that have been on the front line on TV, they've been like, if we select a leader, and end up on belly, and then they're bought. Uh, they're compromised, they start acting differently, they don't even pick the phone calls. Uh, uh, we've seen now the opposition and what is happening. All of a sudden, you know, Baba, who seemed to be speaking in the voice of the Gen Zs, is now saying something different. And now, even in, in a kind of way, the, the movement seems a little bit vulnerable because they were betting on Baba. But you know what? In politics, there are no allies, there are no enemies. So for Gen Zs, who is going to help Gen Zs achieve their goals? Because the narrative is consistent. The, the, the issue of Gen Zs, for us to achieve our goals as Gen Zs, one, I have said, we, only ex we are sovereign, right? We only exercise our powers only in a manner that is in accordance with the Constitution. What then means is that we we gave social contact to these people right mm -hmm. and by the time they finish five years what we need to do as gen C's is that we need to go back home register as voters in our constituencies in our polling stations mm -hmm. and make change from from the bottom because you cannot say at the top ruto must go and you are not making changes from the bottom it means gen C's must step up right mm -hmm. yes we are leaderless but in 2027, Gen Z's must step up five for MCAs where they come from, five for members of parliament, five, five for women representatives, senators, and governor. Because we also need to have an honest conversation. If we're going to speak and let this conversation die here, the same octogenarians will come back in 2027, and we will be facing the same problems. So mm -hmm. if, if we are able, I, I, I know there are more than 8 million unregistered voters in this country. Who so are, you're saying Gen Z should wait till 2027 to have this? No, even if we agitate, and, uh, uh -huh. even if we agitate for changes in the system right now, mm -hmm. the only way that we can do proper changes is in 2027. But we can continue agitating whenever but we, we can see. Vote out in, they, they can vote out. It's provided for in the Constitution. You can impeach, you can reappeal. So, uh -huh. if you want to impeach, you, you cannot recall the president first. The, president the only way, the only is, way he can, he can exit office, <laughs> the, no, the only way he can exit office is true impeachment, right? Yes, and that's on article, true. I believe, 144, Yes, 145. it's true impeachment by the National Assembly. Yes, the after, only people after the bill has been created by the people and sent to the National Assembly. So, yes, so if you feel like the president is not fit to hold office, uh -huh. do a petition to the National Assembly. Yes, Go but to why have Gen Z's not done that? Because they've also been they consistent on the hashtag, Ruto must go, you know, screaming. Everyone is screaming that during the protest. But then why is somebody not guiding the Gen Z's that these are the right channels to follow if you want this and that to be achieved instead of yelling on the streets every day and people being shot and killed? The issues that we have is that we needed to have a leader. But they don't want a leader. They don't want a leader. So so that we have a guiding factor and a guiding policy that look i'm your leader let's do this mm -hmm. let's go this direction let's petition as a people national assembly to do this and and, and this. now that you have but okay now Omtata. they don't have faith yeah. in this no no okay i'm tata is not a gen z oh. they don't have <laughs> okay. faith he's not speaking he's no, it doesn't even represent our fuse okay it, it, the problem with us, we don't have faith in parliament. We also uh -huh. don't have faith in people who purport to lead us because uh -huh. of the, you see, we have been socialized to a way that you are my friend, tomorrow you are elected to an office, you refuse speaking mm -hmm. people's cause, even including your friend. So mm -hmm. we are afraid of the experience. Yeah, but then that, that is the route you must go. For any that is the route we must go, for any conversation to go on, and yeah. for any progressive dialogue and anything to go on and progress to be made in a nation mm -hmm. we must have leaders but if we are if you are but saying you also we are leaderless saying and, also and we are leaderless and faceless is a choice and if, jobless if, yeah. if we if if you are leaderless if we are leaderless and faceless mm -hmm. then okay we are leaderless let's wait for 2027 mm -hmm. we generate our leaders we okay. fail to if you, you vote so in that, means you'll, MCA. that means you'll postpone the pain you'll postpone but the activism the but, the act yeah. the, but the activism will continue and the okay. president himself in his address to the nation last week mm -hmm. he said that there 
he asked the criminal justice system mm -hmm. to burden those who, who, who are arrested and detained illegally, right? Mm -hmm. And he said the government is going to take care of those families who lost their loved ones, who had their loved ones injured. That, that was the, what the president said last week before announcing the... He even said it like a month ago while he was addressing... Yeah, so we are waiting for the progress. Yeah. You see, the kind of governance we have, it, uh, we have is a bureaucratic. The president gives a policy direction, mm -hmm. but due to bureaucratic, bureaucratic nature of the system, yeah. it has to go through some stages. You know, I've never understood, what is the system? You know, everybody mentions system, this so system. Decisions that. are not made. In government, decisions are not made even if the president gives policy direction. Uh -huh. We have the Ministry of Interior, right? Uh -huh. All the way to somewhere like Pangani Police Station. From mm -hmm. the Ministry of Interior, we have the Office of the County Commissioner. Mm -hmm. We have the Regional Police Commander. Uh, that is how decisions flow. So and you have and to wait. All, along the way, so along the way, wait until those channels are along, reached yes, before along, you get along the way, no. along the way, discussions are going on. Mm -hmm. This is the policy direction that the president has given. Yeah. And okay, are we going to actualize? Because we must also actualize this policy direction in a manner that is in accordance with the constitution and it doesn't violate the laws. But it has violated the human rights by killing and murdering. Let me ask you, uh, the killer cops, yes. everybody saw them live on TV. Even the president, when he was being interviewed at some point, they played clips in the trio, the Lina Skaikai, Eric Latif, and Joa Gale. The killer cops have not been arraigned. Uh, there's one of the representatives from IPOA who did an interview in one of the stations, said he was receiving frustrations from uh, the ODPP, saying that, you know, police are not cooperating. Uh, even the footage of what happened on 25th at Parliament, they've not even been able to access. Uh, th there's a section where journalists operate. They've now been kicked out. And this is because they don't want to exactly reveal that this is what transpired. Uh, the number of people that have died in well, KNHCR says it's more than 60, you know. Other high authorities are saying some different numbers. Uh, the abductions until now, in fact, I've just seen online, uh, somebody has tweeted that they will have to put up billboards of everyone who was killed and, 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 and abducted. So when it comes to receiving justice for these victims, will, we, will they have to wait until, even if it's six years, because six years later, because I've even seen in the Baby Pendo case, this is a story that happened around five years ago, but he, it's now receiving justice today. So if you're, is, saying, if you're talking system. about compensation, then, then there's no compensation there. That's the system. It means the, the, you, you are killed and the president the rest directed, is on you. The president yeah. directed the government agencies, the relevant government agencies, mm -hmm. to take data of those whom their property was looted and those who lost their lives, right? And then after they, de they take data, they're going to discuss it because some of the things, we must do some of the things within the confines of the Constitution. I cannot just wake up in the morning and say, okay, I am compensating so and so. Somebody can litigate. You know, we, we, we live in a litigious country. If I compensate you for something using state resources, somebody can go to court and say, fine which is the provision that speaks about compensating somebody. So some of the things are supposed to be done in stages and in progress. And we must be patient as a people. You can't be patient if you're in pain. A pain that you inflicted upon yourself because, look, somebody a said... That you have yes, to, you must yes. explain that part. I'm yes. not letting no, you uh, 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 yes. um, explain that part. A pain that you inflicted yourself meaning... Yes. I mean... Mm, the people who were protesting were peaceful protesters, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the Super Tuesday, <laughs> it was mm -hmm. it was a Super mm -hmm. Tuesday in town. So when they were, by the time they were protesting, Parliament is a protected area. Mm -hmm. You only gain entrance into Parliament if you are permitted. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get forceful entry into a protected area, the pro the genuine protesters. And in the earlier information said, look, when MPs will be passing the finance bill, we will keep vigil around Parliament to agitate that for them not to pass. That was the earlier information. But some people somewhere saw it fit to invade a protected space. So they inflicted pain on themselves. 
if you are shot inside parliament buildings, mm -hmm. you go there with, without approval or without 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 any approval by any authority to get in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a protected area under the law, and the law deals with you. But if somebody was shot somewhere in maybe Kimathi Street, mm -hmm. that is the conversation we should be having, like somebody like Rex Masai, who mm -hmm. was shot in the street, mm -hmm. by when he was exercising his democratic right of picketing. So that is so the in short, at this point, we'll have to pinpoint to say, wale wale pigiwa parliament, yes. wale jipele kauko, shidayenu, no, rest so she, in It's peace. not about shidayenu, ah, it's about... Awe nyo wale pigiwa uko kungina kawawa on the streets, awe sasa, we can say, you know, they died We must have an honest conversation. If you uh -huh. say you're going to invade state house and it's a protected area, uh -huh. and then you are killed, uh -huh. the law... We are a country governed by the rule of law. Even if is you it guaranteed that you'll be killed since you're a citizen of the country? Anyways, so you've just you're a, a citizen, area. but you only you exercise your sovereign power uh -huh. in accordance with the constitution, and the constitution and the laws of the land pass you from gaining entrance into protected areas without any authority. So it means the authority protecting that area will respond by killing and shooting you, right? When you overpower the police, they, have, they are also have to defend themselves. By killing you, right? No, I, whatever they do, even if by beating you up, uh, it doesn't matter. But the conversation you should be having about uh, the compensation and of, of the people who, who were injured and, and killed in the protest mm -hmm. is that there's a need for a tax force that is going to to look at into these things to ensure that families get justice because mm -hmm. it's not just about compensating people who died mm -hmm. so by compensating you mm -hmm. because somebody died doesn't mean you will not be in pain you will still be in pain even if you receive the compensation mm -hmm. we need to look for a multi-sectorial engagement on how to engage these families because somebody can compensate you even have a million shillings for losing somebody, but you will still be in pain. Losing somebody is not the same as having that money and compensation from government. So mm -hmm. as Gen Cs, I've always reiterated this, the changes that we have are progressive. Now that the finance bill was withdrawn and the cabinet was reshoveled. It was dissolved, don't bring them old faces back. No, no dissolving the cabinet is the decision of the president. So I, uh, you don't, you don't have to choose. Was it? There are some people who are competent in cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. There are some people who are competent in like cabinet. Who? No, I don't want to mention the president's appointees. They were competent, and because they were competent, the president saw it fit, and they believe in the president's plan. You see, you lead a government with a party manifesto. Mm -hmm. They believed in the president's plan. We have to bring back these people to continue. So you, you, for you, you're good with the decision of bringing the same, same faces? Some faces, not same, same. You know, when you say same, same, it's, it's, you, you mean <laughs> all of them. Some faces that were in the last cabinet. If they're competent enough, fine, because they believed in the president's plan. And, and let you me ask get you, somebody. Th this guy that has received a negative reaction from Gen Z's, uh, who's been allocated the cabinet for, uh, this docket for sports and youth affairs. Who is that? You know him. I don't have to tell you. Okay, so because I, I think Gen Z's have issues with him. And mm -hmm. he did make an apology, right? Mm -hmm. Before the public. Does it wipe all the dirt and the No no and you, the you see when you make committed? an apology uh -huh. when you make an apology before the public that I might have wronged you in a one way or another. Mm -hmm. So going into the future I'm not going to repeat the same. So that gives him a right to it's continue. not a right. It's the wisdom of the president that saw it fit that he comes back. Okay. They are appointed of the president. By the time we, the people, do not decide on who becomes a cabinet secretary. But the but constitution provides for that. You should vote in public participation. No, there is no public participation. Public participation. Public participation only happens when you are submitting a memoranda before the parliament of Kenya. Mm -hmm. when they are fetching the nominees that look, okay, so if Gen Z's do not have faith in the person Say and the, and the the is in the said Thursday. person. Yes, yes. The is this Thursday, yes. Right. If the agencies do not have faith in the said person, 
that mm -hmm. you are said he was nominated. Do this, submit a memoranda before parliament. Finish him before the floor of the house so that he mm -hmm. doesn't see the light of the day mm. in the floor of the house. But because the government, the, the, the parliament has given clear guidelines, like do this. We, the Gen C, we, there's an email of... There's, Do there's you not first you told me we have an issue with Parliament. You mentioned that. Yes, the, the, the Gen Cs have and an issue. And this is the same, same Parliament you want. <laughs> no, you know, it's president, really funny how... I'm saying... You know, I'm saying... You would buy to a police. No, no, no. no. <laughs> the, the Gen Cs say they don't have faith, faith in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So... It means... And it is the same Parliament that is there the to say... And that it's going to do, they're not trustworthy. Or in favour of them. In the words of, of the people well. who say it so. Yes, because me, I have faith in Parliament. Oh, you, okay. Yes, me personally, because mm -hmm. I voted for my member of Parliament, mm -hmm. I have faith in him. I have social contract with him. Okay. And because I have social contract with him, I have to wait and rate his performance after five years. And in my constituency, there are people who feel like uh, they are not contented with, uh, with the work of my MP. Mm -hmm. They can do this. The Constitution provides right to recall. Mm -hmm. They can start the process of recalling him. Mm -hmm. So the, f the issue of faith and parliament means that we the people, I, I have faith in my MP. You, you don't have faith in your MP. Don't say, we don't have to say, okay, and we don't have, you, 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 you may have or You're not. You're using that as a, a metaphorical description. Yes, not I'm, saying, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying personally, mm -hmm. eh, as Honorable Kiprona Arab Kirwa, I have, okay. faith, I have faith in my member of parliament because I voted for him. Mm -hmm. He garnered majority of the votes to sit in the city he's sitting mm -hmm. in today. Mm -hmm. So you cannot. We so cannot have you benefited from his leadership? Definitely. You, my constituency is bigger than me first. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm seeing going on in my constituency, so thick, mm -hmm. is great development. There's construction of roads, classroom, last mile connectivity. So in one way or another, I'm going to benefit because myself, I, I go to these schools. I went to these schools constructed using the same NTCDF. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousins go there. People get bursaries in the ground. Mm -hmm. So in one way or another, I might not have benefited directly from his leadership, but in one way or another, I'm a beneficiary of his leadership. Yeah. So lastly... Uh, and parliament is constituted... We have like two minutes okay. to go. Uh, before we sum it up. I feel like we're just getting started. What do you think is making Gen Z's angry? It seems like every day there's something to be angry about. There's a new statistic coming out of money laundered. Uh, I remember there's a time, I think it's a couple of weeks ago, the Auditor General issued like back-to-back -back, uh, findings. 15 billion shillings point something was lost in a citizen. 1.2 uh, billion was lost in, you know, uh, NHI, NHIF or NTSA. Yes. NHIF made a payout in, 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 in an era and so many other money laundered. So, on the issue of money laundering, mm -hmm. the Gen Z's are becoming hungry. You see, by the time when the system is broken, any revelation makes you more angry. Mm -hmm. That if I was angry today that I, m I need finance bill to be withdrawn, and then tomorrow somebody says somewhere 15 billion shillings was lost through shady deals, mm -hmm. I'll be more angry. Yeah, the airport is being sold. No, the, 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 the president himself has confirmed. I am not the spokesperson of anyone. The president, I trust him. The president mm -hmm. himself has confirmed that there was, there is no intention to sell. And you know, even if the airport mm -hmm. was to be sold, uh -huh. it needs a strategic public participation mm -hmm. through, through the institution of parliament mm -hmm. and afford by parliament. That is a strategic asset of the state. So sometimes the challenge that we, have, we also have in the country is wh whereby we have yeah. to, to get ESA. But, it, but it's running JKI, that, that company, that you know, it was purported to be buying JKI. Do you have a proof that it's run? Yeah, let me, let me read it to you okay. now that you, you're just leading me there before we exit. So this is just an update. In fact, yes. it's uh, 15 minutes ago. India Farm ice job cuts in new terms for Kenya aviation staff in Dale. Kenya Airports Authority employees will have to renegotiate their contracts with the possibility of job losses to some some that should India's Adani Airport Holdings in its bid to run Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. So it means they've responded should. because they've been triggered. Should? By, uh, should, should they 
wish to continue working with the agency that has been running JKIA, International Airport, it's here. So it means some of these things were happening behind the scenes. And, and that is why we say the system, and that is why we that is why we said, that is why, that is why we said the system was already broken. Because some of these deals, some of the ghosts that are haunting President William Ruto right now, mm -hmm. are things that were negotiated way before he became the president. Oh, so any issues are my babu. No, 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 it's not the issues are my babu uh -huh. in the last governments. Mm -hmm. So s some of these issues were negotiated way before he became the president. It's mm -hmm. only that Kenyans are coming to know, because Kenya is a country of information, mm -hmm. Kenyans are coming to know these things at the time president is in power. And because mm -hmm. he's the one representing the people, mm -hmm. he's answerable to that. And he said yesterday mm -hmm. in the town hall meeting in Mombasa that, okay, look, you're not going to sell JKIA, it's a strategic national asset. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, it's, a, it's already a policy directive by the president that, okay, there's no sale of JKI. Okay. Yes. Uh, lastly, anyone who will want to be a leader yes. and represent this movement yes. until the grievances are fully heard, or rather anyone as well who would have maybe a wish or a dream to participate in the next general election, what are the qualities that they should have as we exit in less than a minute? Uh, anyone who, who wants to be a leader generally, which possibly means he, will part he or she will participate in the next election, mm -hmm. should be people-centered, mm -hmm. somebody who, who listens to the cries and the fears of the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just urge my fellow agencies, let's do this. Let's step up and register first as photos mm -hmm. and take, fo take photos card when the campaigns will open for 2027, we register as aspirants. Because we are said we are leaderless and partyless, we can also go through independent, to be independent candidates. So that if you have a challenges agency, maybe in Majakos, who wants to run for an MB in Majakos town constituency, uh -huh. you call on your fellow agencies to support your, right. your cause. So mm. that is why, th by doing that, we will be able to, to build progressive leadership from the grassroots all the way to national level. Absolutely. So thank you so much. For Do you have uh, a social media so that they get to see your your profile? I mean, you don't have social media. No, you. I'm not in social media. So, okay. so, so but so. you can you can. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Kevin Kirwa. All right. So, yeah. so I ensure that you follow him. Let me see if I can get a comment or two before we exit very really fast. All right. Uh, I think uh, most of them are just uh, the same same ones. Uh, Siloba Bungoma tuned in. Honorable Lamex Emil. And Ole Junior Jose locked in Kamakawaida. Gen Z Voketis on the same engineer Mreti. Rasta Voketis are from Kaira, Kanye Kenemeru. Thank you so much and thank you to you too, Mr. Mwesema Honorable Arab Kirwa. Kirwa. Yes. So, so, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Definitely we'll invite you again. Okay? Yes. And that's where we put a close to it. We say thank you so much for trailblazing with us from exactly 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll absolutely see you tomorrow, bright and early. I and Stephanie at Brand Circle 101 at Y254 Channel. At Stephanie Ayeta. Have a fantastic Monday. See you tomorrow.